Okay. So my thoughts and emotions create the resonance that's mirrored around me. Now, this is a really amazing thing to understand that literally it is our vibration in this world that is creating what occurs around us. It brings people and events into form. Um, and this is kind of the quantum theory of this. So it's something I've practiced living for. I wrote the books in 2012 and um, published in 2013 and did like a tour with the books in 2014. So it's been a good 10, 12 years that we've just been practicing living this way. And it is, it's an amazing way to live, to, um, to realize that I am literally, if something happens in my world, that it is my thought, my emotion that's creating this. Um, and so one of the things we talk about, and this is from the ancient Aramaic, is canceling, releasing, and letting go any old data inside of us. And Harvard studies show us that 95% of the data, the information, the unconscious content we're carrying around is unconscious. 95% of the information that we're carrying around is unconscious. So only 5% is conscious. So if I think to myself, I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm going to put money in my bank account, that is 5% of our thought. And the other 95% is the thought that comes from our ancestors, comes from our programming, comes from how we were trained in this culture, in whatever culture we live in. And it is that programming, it's like having little endless loops running. And those unconscious thoughts are literally also creating around me. Um, and like Diane in the situation you mentioned where it was like, maybe this guy spent the money to heal himself, but maybe the church as a collective, maybe there were enough thoughts of, oh my gosh, are we going to make it? Are we going to manage getting done what we need to? Um, and you are holding this light of, yes, we are. But one of the things we talk about is clearing our unconscious data. And this is something so important. And it's, it's kind of difficult to understand when we start thinking about it. But I am a creator in a quantum universe, and I breathe, smile, and love and this is what helps me clear this old data and set the tone of what i want to create so i want to look at this little map that comes from the ancient aramaic of the brain the mind um, how our mind works and this is getting a little scientific but the aramaic is a quantum language believe it or not the aramaic letters and sounds are literally the vibration of matter taking form. If you can just think about that a minute. Um, and ancient Aramaic predates and fed into almost all the, the big languages, um, Arabic, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Polynesian, the main languages around the world were sourced from the ancient Aramaic and the major religions as well. So a lot of foundational knowledge and beliefs um, are in the ancient Aramaic. And it literally is a language operating in the quantum realm. And this is something that we're just beginning to understand today. Dr. Michael Rice, who has been uh, a peer of mine, but also a mentor. I've learned so much from him about the ancient Aramaic and this quantum language, how our, how our thought creates in this world, um, has really shared so much with me. And I, I want to give him credit. His, his website and his wife Jeannie's website is whyagain.org, and they have over 20,000 pages there on the ancient Aramaic. They have the, um, the true translation of the Beatitudes, of the Lord's Prayer, 
Um, and we, when we begin looking at some of these things in Aramaic, they actually teach us how to use quantum thought. Much different than the old, um, I don't know, benefit and punishment system that a lot of religions got built on that didn't make a lot of sense. But in those days, 2000 years ago, there was no understanding of what the unconscious mind was. So although Yeshua was trying to teach people, uh, you know, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, put out the energy that you would like to receive because your world is going to mirror it to you. Um, these are the things that when you begin to understand this, you begin to get what he really was teaching. Um, and what I love to look at as the baseline of all of this, um, and in the words of the ancient Aramaic in the New Testament, what he did say is cancel, release, and let go what you're holding on to, your old data. Cancel it, release it, and let it go. And when we look at that, we say, like, maybe I have a goal. Okay, I'm going to have a million dollars in the bank or I'm going to get well. However, one of the things we learn in the Aramaic and this quantum way of thinking is to cancel our goal because our goal, for instance, say I'm going to, I'm saying I'm going to have a million dollars in the bank that may literally be based on my unconscious fear of lack. My grandfather was a poor farmer from Lebanon. Um, he was wonderful. But it's possible that I'm fighting that unconscious data. So one of the ways that we begin aligning with being able to really bring forth the vibration that we would like to create, we have to cancel, release, and let go our old data. And when we have the emotions of pain or suffering or grief or sadness or fear or anger or unconsciousness come up, these are the things that we have to cancel, release, and let go. And then the most harmonious state we can enter into, a couple of you um, mentioned the power of now and being in the eternal now. And what literally we can do, we have a neural plexus in the front of the brain, the frontal lobe of the brain, and it was called Rachma in the Aramaic. And that is where, when we smile, we completely change our neurobiology. And in the back of the brain is Kuba. And that is another neural plexus, again, talked about in the ancient Aramaic. And when we breathe, taking a deep breath and smile, we literally open these neural plexuses that allow us to live with intentions and perceptions of love. I'm telling you guys a lot in a few short minutes here, but just to grasp this, that a lot of our data is unconscious. It's important when it rears its head up, we need to learn to cancel, release it, and let it go. And we can even use those words. I now cancel that and I let it go. The fear of something, the longing for something, um, anything that is not at the level of love is an unconscious emotion surfacing. So if we can cancel, release, and let those go. And then we remember to breathe and smile. And when we smile, we're activating intentions of love. And when we breathe, we're activating perceptions of love. So just try it in the post office. Try it in the grocery store. When you're standing next to somebody, breathe and send a smile their way. And sometimes people don't know what to do, but you can really begin changing the environment around you by centering in this yourself. When we breathe, Kuba is saying, I greet you with openness. When we greet with a breath coming in. And then when we smile, we are sending intentions of love to that other person. And the in the those who still speak the ancient Aramaic today in Afghanistan and different places that have been questioned say Rachma 
is the most precious jewel a person can possess. So we want to recognize that we are a quantum biological mechanism and our thoughts and our emotions are literally resonating or vibrating in our world to call in creation around us. So when I speak or think that something outside of me is the cause of something inside of me, I am in denial. But of course, denial is the river that runs through Egypt, right? If I am in pain, I am in denial. So if we're in pain, if we're suffering, if we're worried, if we're doubtful, if we're afraid, if we're unconscious, if we're angry, if we're hurt, we are in denial of energy that's actually being carried around inside of us. I'm giving you guys a lot of information in a kind of a short time here, but I'd like to just transmit these principles because they're amazing. So as we connect with our old data and we clear and heal it, in the presence of love, we open the path to forgive ourselves, to let go of all that unconscious data, and be able to create in new ways. That's beautiful. Thank you. If I may, was, Carrie, I yes, find go this ahead. As, a, as a foundation, because your question was, how are we creators? And I'm sensing from this is like, the basics. This is the foundation, the bottom line, where to start. And in every exercise, sport, martial art, it's always breathing. Start with the breathing. Meditation. What's the first place we go to is the breath. And what I find here is an addition, the breathing and adding the smiling in, uh, activating the brain and bringing in my creatorship. I, I find this amazing, profound. And I'm in gratitude as I speak. Thank you. Yes. And it is, it's, it's really so simple because I can sit here all night and explain quantum concepts and how the clearing of ourselves work. But when it boils down to it, if we'll breathe, smile, and love, and center in those intentions, and let go of anything, cancel, release, and let go, anything not of love, we literally will change everything in our world. It's really that simple. So another thing we want to let go of is blame. Um, because blame is something that is putting it outside of us that, you know, this creation happened because so and so did such and such. This creation happened because somebody was late. This creation happened because blah, blah, blah. But quantum physics tells us there is no out there, out there. There is no them or me. There is only my vibration from my 5% conscious and 95% unconscious data. And I say this is our walk of mastery right now to begin to learn to let go of that which is inside of us, which is not of the vibration love, and to learn to center in love. We are divine creator beings designed to operate in love. That is our design. And when we're getting feedback of something less than love, if you don't like what you see in your world, clean out your own old data resonating in the field. This is the advanced course. I mean, this is for masters choosing to walk on the earth today. And those of us who are here opted to come in for this round to say, can we as humanity create a viable future for ourselves that is filled with positive creation? Can we learn what that is? And that's what our walk of mastery is right now. I believe that we're learning that. We're learning to change ourselves to change the world. And with that, we breathe, smile, and love. 
And the matrix or this hologram or this world that we live in can only mirror what we give it. Marek, would you like to go ahead and read the, um, we're gathering together with others. You know, part of our, uh, par part of what we're doing right now is learning how to live, how to breathe, smile, and love, how to change ourselves to change the world, how to connect with others who are in this great rainbow tribe with us. And I love the saying from the Hopi that Marek will read right now. And for the recording, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Marek Villalobos, and I'm the lucky guy that gets to say I'm the husband of Carrie Kirstar Ellis. <laughs> and, um, so yes, I would love to share. Great. As I take a breath, smile, and feel love in my heart. Quote, we are living in a time the ancients called the great shift of the ages. A time of unstoppable change. As the Hopi saying tells us, the river is flowing very fast. Let the river carry you. Don't hold on to the shore. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Close quote from Hopi Elder, Hopi Araibi in Arizona. Mm, I love that. It's just one of my all-time favorite quotes, and I think it really says we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are here to create this change. And let's go on with our slides here. Let me get back in full mode here. So consider your path. Everything you think, say, and do matters. Stand in the resonance of your true self. Breathe, smile, and love. And this is a quote from one of the 21st century superhuman books. And Shams Tabrizi, who was Rumi's guide, his master, his son, says, a good man complains of no one. He does not look to faults. And one of the ways to think about this is how do we stay out of blame? How do we stay out of saying it was someone else's fault? How do we stay in the kindness of our heart and recognize we are response able? We are able to respond in every situation with a clearer vibration because everything that occurs around us, we need to know it is there as a mirror of what is going on inside of us, conscious and unconscious. Now to the Coptic group um, or those who are on the path, I know that this is something that we suffer for. You know, our world is one of terrible contradictions. This is Bunky Moon. Uh, the, who was the UN Secretary General when this was said. Plenty of food, but a billion people go hungry. hungry. Lavish lifestyles for a few, but poverty for too many others. Huge advances in medicine, while mothers die every day in childbirth and children die every day from drinking dirty water. Billions spent on weapons to kill people instead of keeping them safe. So how do we change the world? How do we change these things? Anybody feel free to pop in. We breathe, smile, and love, and we offload our own old data. As Rumi says, stop acting so small. You are the universe in divine motion. So we are the ones who change the world. The whole world is you, yet you keep thinking there is something else. The universe is like a collective bank account. The currency is energy. When you give to it, you can draw from it as well. 
By sharing your energy willingly, you make a positive investment into the world's energetic bank account. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Maybe it's time for us to begin stepping beyond our programmed beliefs. Oh, but it's their fault. It's the fault of the bad guys. You know, them out there. Maybe that's, maybe the edge of our comfort zone is to begin saying, it's only me. What old anger do I need to get rid of? What old resentment? What old pain? What old grief? What have I been carrying around by virtue of my ancestors and the programming of my culture, the programming of the television? How do I step beyond that comfort zone and being able to take responsibility for my vibration in the world? Well, I breathe, smile, and activate those neural plexes so I can resonate in love and I can see when things come up in me that need to be let go of. This is a real truth speaking journey to begin doing it this way. Maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Maybe it's unbecoming everything that isn't you so you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. And that's Marek on a, on a board paddling out on a beautiful laguna that we live on some of the time. Whatever it is that stirs your soul, listen to that. Everything else is just noise. You are a magical expression of creator consciousness. You are beautiful. You are gorgeous. You are healthy. You are whole, you are love, you are filled with radiance, you are filled with knowledge, you are filled with expression that can change the world. And so honor yourself, breathe and smile and live that path that your heart draws you to. Love self, love others, follow your dreams, breathe and smile. Be the change. Be world peace. I, I heard a really cool lady talk the other day. I don't know who it was exactly. It was some, you know, just a blip on one of the social medias. And um, I thought, she's really saying what I've come to the conclusion as well. You know, this is a, this is a game environment. It's an environment where we said, okay, I'm going to go step into that game and I'm going to see if I can change the course of humanity so that if I can resonate as a being of love and I no longer need to look at those people who are playing in the game, who are generating war, who are generating suffering, they came to play in it too. And they're in their own phase of evolution. They're going to have their karma that comes back to them. It isn't my job to hate them, to be angry at them, to send out bad vibes to them. My only job is to breathe, smile, and love, to be the change that I wish to see, to let go of the vibration in me that holds the frequency of that negativity that I think I see out there, but right there is no out there, out there. There is only a mirror of what is coming from inside here. You make the stuff that holds the world together as you embed your aura into larger fields by the phi ratio love, your aura gets larger and eventually interstellar. That's from Dan Winter and his book, Heart, Compassion and the Fractal Field. I think that's my last slide. Awake, this might, I might have one more actually. So it is our time to be awake. It's our time to awaken to the capability that we have of being the change that we wish to see. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And that's me on a kayak on our beautiful Laguna Bacalar. So that is those. And what I have to share with you 
is would anybody like to I, I have a meditation that I'll play it's our 21st century superhuman um, activating abundance activating our creation ability meditation it's about a 15 minute meditation if you guys are good with that um, but first and I'll give you guys a link so that you can have the meditation when you're done it can be posted under this video I have a YouTube um, link of it so that that's easy it'll be easy to pass on with the video um, would anybody like to comment on the, these awarenesses because once we listen to the meditation I think we'll we'll say adios because it really takes us into a relaxed state Anybody like to say anything? I'm um, very impressed, very moved um, in another space, a higher space, a deeper, sp deeper place. And um, I'm beginning to get it, <laughs> that this is, this is all about me and my peace, my love, my connection to self, my connection to cosmos, all the same, the same, same. That's my initial response. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I really like the um, you know, the reminder of the concept that when you blame someone else or when you put that outside of yourself, you're effectively giving your power away, and it's through coming inside that we actually expand outside through the inside. And so I, that was really a, a nice reminder because it really is, you know, we talk about creating our world, but if you're giving all your power away to everybody around you, how can you create anything? You have no power, no energy to create that which which you want. And, you know, so I thought that was that was a really good thing. And, you know, the other thought that I um, work on all the time, let's say I have plenty of room for improvement is, you know, if I... Um, if I do that, you know, where I put something outside of me, it's their fault, for example, you know, then I'm, I'm giving, giving my power away. And, um, you know, so it's, it's just a great reminder and a great lesson to, to, to bring that all back in and, to, you know, to say, because, you know, the one thing is, it's so easy for us to justify it, right? Damn it they're wrong and I know I'm right because I can justify because I've got five different reasons why they're wrong. You know, and you really get that in the world today. It's even becoming more split nowadays too. And so anyway, you know, you try to tell somebody that and they're like, well, that's all good news, but they're still wrong. <laughs> so I really like that message. Thank you. That's a really good point, Steve. And um, one thought I have just thinking of that is, you know, I've been doing this for so long I don't get away with it anymore. I don't get away with anything. I mean, if I say something bad about somebody or think something, think something bad about somebody, but if I say it out loud, all of a sudden, I just did this the other day. All of a sudden I opened up a container of pesto in the kitchen and it just splattered all over me, all over the kitchen. And I was like, it's because I said something bad about that person. You know, I don't get away with it. I mean, I'll trip, I'll, there's, I just can't get away. I mean, not that I would want to get away with it, but I just get, I know so much that I just get voinked if I, if I even step out of that vibrational zone and I start not remembering that I'm the creator. I mean, yeah. Instant balancing. Instant balancing <laughs> is great. Yes, it's coming so much faster and, and we can create what we want in lives just as easy as we created that pesto shower. Right? Exactly. Yes. And the person didn't deserve my unkindness. You know, it was just really, why would I want to send that kind of thought out into the world? Like, nope. <laughs> Darcy, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I love the simplicity of the breath and the smile, which is something we take with us all day long, you know, <laughs> with yes. we you know, I, I think about I think about the Buddha and the half smile, and you know, when we when we smile, that immediately calms the sympathetic um, nerve um, part of our brain. That, and, and you know, I, I loved your example too. You know, just go around and and do this to other people, and I have done that in places where 
I didn't necessarily feel welcome or like that the vibe was super friendly, but um, I thought, well, okay, then I'll just model that, you know, and <laughs> just go around and smile and, you know, say hi to people. And um, it, I, you know, people kind of, oh, oh, like, oh, she's talking to me, you know, and, and they can't help but respond. I, I rarely have had an, you know, an instant where somebody, you know, <laughs> gives me the stink eye or something. Agreed. Oh, agreed. Yeah. It's just kind of that contagion of smiling, you know, that I'm connecting with you and they don't necessarily know what to do with it except smile back, you know? Yes. So, and with that simple act, you are changing the resonance of the entire field around you. And what a beautiful, cool, simple thing to remember. Thank you for that. Yeah. Laura. Yep. Um, actually, I was right, right along the lines with Darcy, too. I've been finding that, um, oh, I can't remember maybe, well, all of this year in particular, where we're living now, it's not a terribly safe place. But what I'm finding, in, and I really liked especially today, another way of explaining um, both the Rachma and Cuba, um, but to activate the neural flexus, the neural flexus um, aspect of it. Um, but I'll be like in a grocery store, I'll be in going in and to pay for gas or some whatever. But it's almost as like there's this inner child of me that wants to peek out, you know, from my eyes <laughs> to see who's around there. And then it's fun because it's like, I look at the person like behind the counter. And, um, you know, and I always check their name tag. And to say hi, you know, and, and um, sometimes like at the bank, I had a younger younger man, oh gosh, probably in his 20s, uh, just yesterday. And it was like, you could tell he was not really comfortable with older folks, you know. But then I asked him how his day was. I said, do you like working here? And he pops up and says, yeah. You know, so you start on a different level automatically when you do activate those. And it's just, like I said, it's contagious. But for me, it, it was the... Um, the uh, inner child that wants to peek out and play games and do fun things like that, you know. So it's like, you know, I refuse to grow up. I can I can get a little older, but that's fine. But growing up is optional. That's beautiful. Very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Always fun. Always fun. Yeah. Our dear Diane, what hast thou to say? Well, as it happens, I'm I'm doing a sermon Sunday on love, the mystery of love. It's called, and I'm getting a lot of different approach to the idea than than what i was doing but but i'm also thinking about people that you know um, people that i counsel that I, I mean that go that ask for counseling and and support and who are involved in you know having been uh betrayed by their partner and abandoned with a child and are full of such blame and resentment and I just, you know, I want to be able to offer them this truth. And I, I'm realizing that the key to it is not to say, you can't be blaming people. That's not going to, that's not going to work. Is to just start from where you started. It's such a, a, a tremendous approach as a teacher to, you know, and so I want to, I want to use this video. <laughs> yeah, I can send you my slides if you want. You're welcome to them if if they're useful. Um, because some of those images, just seeing the brain, and you know, that comes up when we are in these. Laura Joy, have you been in Michael Rice's workshops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, I thought. So. And, and, I, and you, know, I, you know, I had him do a whole week here. Right, and, right, yeah. And um, I probably, yeah. Well, you know, and what comes up in this conversation is what about people that have been raped what about people that have had somebody murdered in their family but like you're saying someone who's had a partner leave them and it's really a long i mean it's a it's a thing to unwind you know and it does need to be broached gently and i like i'm here teaching something that a lot of the world is not quite ready for and yet it is my great joy to share it when people are ready for it. And so, yeah. you know, I think you're right. You have to be careful and respectful and you're dealing with people coming from a lot of different places, but planting the seeds, I think, um, 
you know, did I call in getting raped? You know, did, was there something in me that called that in? You know, that's the, the shaming of the society. You know, that's the negative uh, concept that happens. And um, so we don't want to get people caught up in that either. Um, it's just beginning to learn, you know, perhaps there was, you know, the person's a lot of times we'll see it in bloodlines. We'll see like, you know, the mom was a single mom and then here this person got left. And my friend Teddy, who I think you know, uh, who's in Grand Haven part of the year in Florida the rest of the year, who's been, was a good friend of John Davis's and has been part of this whole community. Um, there's five generations of women whose beloved husband partner died. And it goes back to her great grandmother. And she had a guy who was her love in high school who died in, who drowned when they were like the first, you know, late, te late teens, early 20s. And she said, if I had married Danny and um, raised kids with him, I never would have become the spiritual person that I am. And, and then her daughter had the same thing happen. I knew her when her daughter's husband, they had a three-year-old son, got out to help somebody on the highway change a tire and a car came by and killed him. And the mothers, I think the mother and the grandmother's guy had gone away to war, you know, World War I, World War II, but it was like just a short. So in this field, and when we talk about me healing my broken arm in a matter of three to six hours with body electronics, um, we are having to cancel, release, and let go. We're having to bring up to love all these generational patterns that we're carrying around. I mean, I had met a guy that I was going to be married to for 12 years and um, who was a Coptic minister, Bill Delano. And, uh, and we had a really neat life together. But when we met, um, what came up for me was suffering that I had had with my dad, who was a wonderful person, but he had World War II PTSD. And then I had been married to somebody else when I was younger. And so I had all this fear and reticence coming up. So I fell and broke my arm on the ice. And um, when we, so what I had to do, the training in body electronics was to have somebody holding points on the back of my head, my feet, that my arm that was broken, doctors wanted to do surgery and put two pins in. And all this stuff started coming up from my relationships and the sadness, the grief, the anger, the blah, blah, blah. And as that rose to the surface, I would take it up to love. And the person who had their fingers on the back of my head could feel little electric shocks go in their fingers and say, whatever you're doing, you're doing the right thing. Keep going. And so we have ways to nurture each other into realizing that entering into love is the most healing thing that we can possibly do. And so I just encourage you to do your best to share, to seed the principles without making the person feel wrong or anything yeah. like that. And it's just going to depend on where their consciousness is, right? Beautiful though. Yes, Laura Joy. Um, something else has come up again too. Something that I've, that I've, I don't know quite when it started, but there was a, because of the quantum nature of reality, and I'll put quotation marks around it, but because of the way you had it wonderfully uh, displayed in that one slide, um, to me, all of a sudden I made a connection where for some reason I kept talking about um, the speed of love. Um, gratitude or whatever, but something, something, something to the speed of love to you or whatever. But to me, that was a, a connection of the quantumness of it. And that's another reason perhaps why not everybody in the world is ready for it, because it is a different language. Like yeah. Different. And it's like, what density are you yeah. at? What density are you still dealing with? Right. But the truth is, everybody really is ready for it. The more we can live it, the more we can embody it the more the whole frequency of this place will change because there is no out there out there you know <laughs> yeah. so i can make that judgment and say everybody isn't ready for it and then in saying that i don't even feel right saying it because that's a judgment and judgment is below love so i think it's time yeah 
Yes, and quantum is instant. And we talk about, the, we live for the coming golden age. We live for the golden age, for embodying the golden age here and now. And that is our choice. It is, um, Marek mm -hmm. and I talk That's about it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holding the space of the new earth now and shining a light from here to there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other comments? Let me go ahead and I'll screen share again. I'll pull up the guided meditation and start playing it. And um, when it gets done, mm. maybe I'll just go ahead and sign off and we can call that the end of the, so if you're resting or you're in an altered state, you don't have to come out of that. Is that okay, Steve? Does that work for you? Sure, sure. Do you okay. want me to record this also or should we? Um, you're welcome to record it. It's fine. Um, yes. And then I'll also, yeah, yeah, and I'll also give you the link too. Yeah, it's a nice grand finale, and you're going to want to take a few breaths and relaxing breaths. And I'll say goodbye from here. It's actually uh, Madek's voice narrating it. He's narrated my books also, and he has a really nice. Um, he was trained on radio and stuff, and we've been in studios. And uh, so, Darcy, what were you going to say? I I just wanted to say thank you before we, <laughs> since, we're, since we're going to end, um, you know, and, and go our separate ways. Thank you so much, Carrie, for your sharing and your heart and your teaching and just reminding us who we are. Thank uh -huh. you. She, I second that. Thank you. We have this workshop tonight. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Yep. Wonderful job. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Ciao, this, ciao. Is, this is my mission and my purpose. This is what I live for. There's so much teaching that's needed. And I feel like this is the message that Yeshua had. I feel like it's the modern day remembering who we are as divine beings and what else is there. You know, to me, there's nothing else to do with my life but share this. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so I'll go ahead and screen share. Love to you all. I wish you well. Thank you for being here and we shall communicate more. And um, Steve, I'll send the video link to Brenda. Okay. And um, Diane, if you want anything, just message me and I'll be happy to share anything you need. Any, all of you, actually. Okay. Much love to all. Many blessings. Share sound. Let's go ahead and put this on. And I have to go plug my computer in, so I run and get my plug. Okay. 21st century superhuman meditation. Access your super self. Manifest the life of your dreams. The longevity gene goes up 30% in two months of meditation. Make this a regular practice. Sit or lie comfortably immediately upon awakening in the morning or last thing before going to sleep at night in a quiet place. Get ready for inner stillness. Enter the state to access your super self. Prepare to manifest your life in new ways. 21st century superhuman meditation is one of the best tools available for expanding our capacity for health, longevity, success, and solving global issues. Focus 
on your vision of consciousness, presence, light, protection, higher energies, higher dimensional beings, God presence, or whatever your own way is, silently to self, of setting the field. Call in higher realms according to your personal way of connecting Christed Consciousness, Buddhic Consciousness, Ascended Masters, Angels, Great White Brotherhood, Rainbow Brotherhood, Beings of light and love in all dimensions of time space. Guides and teachers, departed loved ones, Pachamama, Earth Mother Gaia, and her elementals. Become still, relax jaw and body, breathe gently through open mouth. When aware of thought, gently let go and bring mind back to center. Find yourself falling deeper and deeper into silence and peace of inner realms. Specifically, cancel any and all goals pressing upon you. Let them go. Restoring our true design, love, through goal canceling is our master key to effective shifting all timelines and reality. We are participants in the dynamics of the universe. Thought creates ripples in the fabric of time-space, of which 5% is conscious, or we default to the 95% unconscious. Goal cancelling releases us from our 95% unconscious thought. Cancel goals, conscious, unconscious, subconscious, and incomplete. Then cancel all goals. Be specific. I cancel my goal to be free of debt. I cancel my goal to have the perfect relationship or whatever is pressing upon you. Cancel these goals. Invite assistance of Aramaic Ruka de Kudsha 
to clear your unconscious of old unconscious data. Rudka Nikudsha, a feminine elemental aspect of our design that when requested removes all corrupt data not of love like cleaning a virus out of a computer. We invite Ruka to help clear away corrupt data from our conscious unconscious. Ruka Dukudsha was originally translated by the Greeks as Holy Spirit. However, in the Aramaic, it is not a person or a being, but an elemental principle built into our operating system. Give your goals to the field. Trust. Let go. Invite perceptions and intentions of love. Entering into creative consciousness with love, unprecedented change occurs beyond what the rational mind has conceived. Inner stillness, meditation, and love tap into our most powerful creative potential, activating conscious creation through meditative attention that invites the field to flow into form at our command. Open mouth, circular breath to relax holding patterns in the body. Drop down into the field through brain wave frequencies Beta, Alpha, Gamma, Theta, Delta. Carry with you into the field whatever is currently up for you. Hopes, dreams, visions, worries, cares. Specifically, take those things with you that you canceled gold for above. Dive into the field of bubbling effervescent ginger ale with all your visions, hope, and dreams. Allow all to dissolve from particle back into wave form and then go out of form into the field, including you. Allow yourself to float in the field with all your visions, hopes, and dreams. Out of particle form, out of wave form, dissolved into the unmanifest. Enjoy this place of uncreation. Whether it is scintillating 
blue waves or light or rainbows, whatever experience you feel, enjoy the peace of being in the unmanifest. It is best to release doubts, fears, daily challenges, thoughts about our own abundance, success, relationships, global issues such as GMOs, positioning between countries, economic challenges, and system reformation to the field. Rather than worry, we have greater effect by clearing our unconscious, centering in alpha, theta brain waves, holding our vision and allowing it to emerge in new ways from the field. For instance, rather than focusing on echo damage, focus on the wholeness of Mother Earth. Rather than being fearful about our bank account, See it filled with abundance in the unmanifest. Now invite Source to bring forth creation in new ways. Call forth a wave of creation on the shores of your life with greater love than you could ask or think. Trust Source. Give up figuring out. Let the infinite take over. Watch your life change as you practice this 21st century superhuman meditation daily. Continue to breathe with open mouth. Bring closure with gratitude. These powerful built-in tools accelerate our personal evolutionary process. Breathe, smile, and love. Breathing and smiling activates important filters, clearing our neurobiology of energies not of love. A genuine Smile from the heart with eye contact activates the Aramaic filter Rachma, letting another know our intentions are based in love. When breath flows freely, the Aramaic filter Kuba is activated so others sense we relate from perceptions based in love. Breathing and smiling send subtle signals to our body that life is safe. Breathe smile and love. J. 
gently reintegrate with the outer if you are rising or drift into powerful positive sleep for the night.